Hey guys, what's going on? Welcome back to the Leading Edge Cricket Podcast today. It's the continuation of the England depth chart. We have gone through openers, we've gone through number threes, we've gone through the middle order, we've done wicket keepers. And now we've come to what I feel has been the most controversial conversation of all, trying to put together a list of the top 10 all-rounders in English cricket. Test matches, county cricket, trying to piece it together. Who's on the list? Who are we thinking of, Rich? This is tricky, man. This is tricky. Basically, what we're saying is Ben Stokes, wrap him in bubble wrap. Do whatever you need to do. We cannot lose Ben Stokes for at least the next five years. Please don't get injured, Ben. Um, We've got some promising cricketers on the list. We have got some good cricketers on this list, but we do not have the generational talent of Ben Stokes. We do not have a guy that can bat at five and be arguably your best bowler on occasions. We have lads that can bat at six or seven, maybe. But then you also have guys that do you want them to be a bowler. They are going to be your fifth bowler and probably bat at seven. Because that's the thing, isn't it? Before we get underway with this, we're looking at every single all-rounder after Stokes. Is we're basically saying that the wicket keeper will bat at six, and this guy will bat at seven and be a bit of a bit of a hand with a bowling as well. So it's it's been yeah. really hard actually putting it this has. together and. and Get in the right order of the top 10. I've got a list here. There's 22 names that we've gone through Mm. in serious consideration and either ticked in or ticked out. Like Rich says, that there's never going to be another Ben Stokes that's just waiting in the wings or it doesn't feel like there is that's ready right now. But you never know what you could get out of someone. Are you getting someone to bat in seven that's going to need to be a better batter? Or are you Mm. weighing someone in that's going to be part of your bowling unit? Um... So it's it's going to be really interesting. I'm interested to know your guys' thoughts on this. So comment yeah. below and let us know what you think the top 10 should be. Listen till the end and we'll obviously mm. finish up ours. I'll share all the data that we're looking at as well. Mm. I'm going to say data now apparently instead of data. data. Um, and we're going to start, one, by Rich has mentioned generational talent. We are very lucky in England to go from Botham to Flintoff to uh, Stokes. That is absolutely outstanding. No one else in the world cricket has had that lineage with mm. all-rounders like we have. But not- noticeable mentions, Rich. Yeah, I'm going to start with a couple of England players here that we're basically saying isn't part of this conversation is Ollie yes. Robinson and Craig Overton. Yeah, yeah. I think before they played for England, I think we valued them highly with the bat and we thought of them as potential batters in this England team, but I think the best you can possibly ask for them to be is number eight. Yeah. Same goes for Mark Wood, really, as well, isn't it? He's done quite well with the bat recently, but he's not quite in the same category, certainly not of Overton. But Robinson's flat to deceive a little bit, hasn't he, with a bat at test level? He's not shown what he can do. So I don't think we can say that these boys could step up to seven. No. No, there's, there's no way at all. And in, in seven in a test match team, a huge role. You think of the quality players that's bad mm. at seven over the years, um, mm. particularly when you look at world cricket, when you get the likes of Gilchrist coming in at seven, it's like, yeah. are you even able to compete with that yeah. sort of level? A uh, couple of guys, one, one, one to pop the boys. Darren Stevens gets a noticeable oh, mention for how is he not an top exceptional 10? performer, 40-odd years old, Rich, still gets yeah. it done. He's over the last three and a half years. So when I talk about stats, I'm talking 2019 to 2022 to keep it as relevant as we Mm. can pre-COVID, post-COVID to try and work out Mm. how he's going. But he scores runs. He takes wickets. Rich, he's probably just the wrong side of 30. (laughs) Uh, Yeah, basically. Yeah. I mean, he's, he's nearly the same age as probably a young lad coming through the ranks. He's probably Ray and Ahmed of Leicestershire is about seven. I think he's about 17. Darren Stevens is nearly Ray and Ahmed past 30, wrong side of 30. Yeah. So that's probably oh, puts it into context. So he's been such a legend though, hasn't he? And we couldn't have done this podcast without giving him at least a mention and our absolute respect. So Darren Stevens, welcome to the podcast. Um, sorry, you're not in the top 10. Absolute legend. Got, got, got to give him a mention. And then into a, a couple of young lads that we want to touch on. Uh, Finn Hudson Prentice, who's, who's made the move south this year. Yeah. He's on the list. Player. I've got it. the interesting enough, the 34th best all-rounder uh, in county cricket over the last three and a half mm. years. He's an above average bowler with a 101 performance rating, but a 64 performance rating with the bat. 100 mm. equals a league average top six player. Yeah, he's, he's a decent player, isn't he? I think he's an ascending player. He, he, I think he started out at Sussex, went to Derbyshire, started doing well, became a bit of a leader there. And then he's made the move back to Sussex as an experienced player if you can believe a 26-year-old is your experienced player. Um, his stats don't really stack up yet, but I think he is ascending. I think he is a, a decent cricketer. 
and one that one that potentially if we do again if you do this list in another year i think there's, there's consideration for the, some of these players moving into top 10 who we're talking about there's also the like a couple of lads at not in there that we spoke about lyndon james really highly rated um joey everson as well and i think both good bowlers and I think Lyndon James will become the better batsman, but both of them are performing well. And I'm sure your stats show as well that Everson's done really well uh, of late, hasn't he? So that's another two young players, along with Will Jacks um, of Surrey. I think he's somebody you wanted to uh, give a mention to as well. Yeah, I think he just needs a mention. Like he's, he's coming of age a little bit in white ball cricket at the moment. His, his white ball game's getting very good. His red ball game's mm. got quite a long way to go. And to talk all round a category in test cricket is a completely yeah. different kettle of fish. But what you're saying is, Hey, he's he's okay. He's doing okay with the bat. Yeah. He averages twenty seven with the ball. He averages sixty three in in red ball cricket. So it's not great, but there is mm. something there and some potential to go along with it. Yeah, again, it's an ascending cricketer category, isn't it? We're not saying his stats say that he should be an England player, but we're just saying these are some guys to have keep an eye on. Um, I'm sure, and this is what I really want people to let us know about: is who's the the, the, the exciting young talent that's only just going to break through. He might have played one or two first class games. He might not have even played first class. But who is that next generational uh, Ben Stokes out there in county cricket? Because there must be one somewhere. Please be one somewhere. Um, we really need to know who that is. Um, but yeah, that's some good young players there. <laughs> um, yeah, excellent. I want to to just shout out Ed Barnard. Averages thirty seven with the bat in the last three and a half years. 29 with the ball with 96 wickets. He falls under a genuine all-rounder category with those sorts mm. of numbers. Yeah, and he, he, I think he'll be a little bit unfortunate to have not made this list. Hopefully, when people see the list, they'll understand why he hasn't. But I think there is an argument to make that he should have made this list. And I'm sure Rob would have had him in above one player in particular. Hmm, more on that in a bit. <laughs> more on that. Uh, last honourable mention going to Tom Haynes. Exceptional batter. He, he made our... Opener's depth chart at about number four. Yep. Averages 50 with yep. about... He does, he does bowl, Rich, but you've been watching a bit of him and you thought probably struggled to be a fifth choice seamer or fifth bowler I, in test cricket at the moment. Yeah. I think who I would compare him to at the moment, pace-wise, is like a Mark Butcher. Um, yep. Basically, you know, me on a good day. Um, so it gives me heart that I could go and play a bit of first class. But he's a steady bowler. He's bowling first change uh, in this game when Ollie Robinson had his stomach upset. Stomach upset. Um, who went off. Um, he just didn't want to stay on the field at the minute, old Ollie. Yeah. Um, yeah, so I think he's a really talented cricketer, Tom Haynes. He's a captain. He's an opener. He's scoring runs. And he can offer you something with the ball. So I, I don't think you'd play him as that number seven all-rounder. But if you had a team with him opening the batting, he gives you an option with the ball, doesn't he? It's nice to have a top order batsman that gives you an option that isn't a spinner. Yeah. I'm bored of batsmen bowling spin. Let's have the lads trying to bowl the medium paces. Nip it around a bit, lads. Come on. Marnus does it. He bowls whatever Marnus. he wants. He bowls leggies one day and then yeah. goes and uh, and bowls the other. So we'll we'll crack you know. into the top ten, Rich. You start us off. Yes, okay. Uh, Warwickshire skipper Will Rhodes. Now, if this list was done a year ago, it'd be a much easier argument to make say why Will Rhodes is on this list. Very good batsman, initially an opening batsman, dropped himself down the order, bats top five now. Captain material, as we said, he has captain for a few years. A couple of years ago, he bowled exceptionally well. He was taking wickets left, right and centre. This last year or so, it, the ball, clearly, it's not coming out as he wants it or he's not having the look. Whatever it might be, it's not quite there. But he's he's a decent player. He's certainly a good enough batsman uh, to be in this conversation. Yeah, he is, mate. He's, he's pretty good. He averages 31 with the bat in the last three and a half years. Uh, 1,899 runs. He's just a touch below what a league average top six batter looks like, but his bowling is 10% better than a league mm. average player. 53 wickets at an average of 25. One point to note on his bowling, his bowling strike rate is 52. And mm. in the games that he's been playing, his team have a bowling average of 69. So he's actually bowling 17 mm. balls better than a team average yeah. sort of bowler. 2.9 economy rate, a couple of five for thrown into the mixer. Do I think Will Rhodes will play for England? Probably not. Probably never. But I think he's an mm. exceptional county cricketer and he does deserve to be in this top 10 list. He does. And I've just realised he was born in Nottingham. So therefore, he's, got, he's moved up the list dramatically in my eyes yeah. now. So congratulations, Will. Did he play um, at seven, Did he now? Ah, I okay, think so. been, Yeah. I mean, 700s, 1950s, nearly averaging 35 with a bat. That's a really good county record. Yeah. So he certainly deserves consideration. Like you said, whether or not we can actually class him as an all-rounder for England is a different thing, but he makes the top 10 and it tells us where we think he is in line for England. Um, so number nine, Rob, 
this is somebody that I, I'm not sure, maybe people will think Tom Haynes' conversation, really, isn't it? But we're talking Tom Abel. Now, Tom Abel, if he gets in the England team, he's going to bat in the top three or four, isn't he? But he's 28, captainship, captain material again, obviously. Batting-wise, there's no question that he's good enough. Five five and a half thousand runs getting on to 930, 50. Bowling, 55 wickets, an average of 30. So medium pace, he says, I, I haven't seen a lot of him as a bowler. Obviously, a really good cricketer. Would would there be would you you know when we're classifying all rounders would we see him in an England team batting in that seven sort of position or are we saying that you would play another batsman and have him at three and he's your fifth bowler? Yeah, there's the different type of all rounders, aren't there? There's batting all rounders, bowling all rounder. He's a hugely talented batting yeah. all rounder or a batsman that bowls a bit. But if you're mm. trying to add depth and create another yeah. option with the ball. I think he's mm. definitely someone who's got to be thought of. He scored another 100 this weekend. Before this weekend, he was averaging 40 years, sorry, 37 with over 2,000 runs in the last few years. And he's bowling 31 wickets at 30. His bowling's mm. not going to set the world alight. It's, it probably is a stretch to be your fifth bowler in Test Match cricket. But I think he's got yep. the ability to fill in some overs. You're going to mm. need it. And you're right, he might bat at three and it allows you to bring in something else in the team further down. But his his bat's mm. that good that it probably mm. does allow you to wiggle around the order and it, yeah. you know put himself above someone like a Will Rhodes, given his ability with one facet of the game. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I think, yeah, we, it's such a t- tough conversation, isn't it? Because we, ideally you would like that, right, number seven, he's a good enough batsman at bats at seven and he can give you the overs. But not every all-rounder is going to be cut from that same cloth, is it? So it's a different one to, to look at. Right. We're going to get on to the next guy now. And before I do, I'm going to qualify this because we've got three spinners in this list. And it's interesting because England will on occasion go in with Joe Root as their number one spinner. So we have to keep that in mind when we're looking at these guys. And for some unknown reason, Rob, and I hate to use this term, but Rob's a hater for this guy. I mean, you know, <laughs> pile in on Rob if, you, if you're a fan of Matt Critchley like I am. Matt Christie scored a thousand runs last year, so batting wise, he's good enough to play for England. He should be. He was at an unfashionable county, wasn't he, Derbyshire? He's a young fella still. He's only he's twenty five, pushing on now, but he's vastly experienced. Seventy two first class appearances now, um, thirty two and a bit average with about five hundreds, eighteen half centuries. Decent, decent player. Bowling wise, he's got one hundred and twenty two wickets, Rob. Sorry they're not at the right strike rate or the right average for you, but he's got 122 wickets, um, you know, bowling plenty. A best of six for 73, a best in the match of 10 for 194. Now, his average is not what you want to see. His average is 43 overall in first-class cricket. But he's a good player. And he's a good player. And if you're saying, it depends on the situation, if you wanted to go with two spinners, Say the constant, you could bat Matt Critchley at seven and be very happy with him at number seven batting wise, and he could offer you something different with his leggies to, let's say, a Jack Leach or somebody else, or Joe Root in that order as well. If you're happy with Joe Root going in, sometimes as the elite bowler, well then Critchley's there as an option as well, and he's bats at seven, so it's almost like bringing in a batsman that can bowl a bit. Anyone that thinks that this guy isn't an all rounder needs to really reassess their, their information and how they view cricket. Rob, I'm talking to you. So we had a 10-minute conversation. We we're 25 minutes going through this list before we go on. We, we come up with our own list and then we match them up. And quite often it's an easy process. This took most of the conversation trying to work out where Matt Critchley goes. and how. That's I because you didn't want to on the list at all. He deserves to be um, on the list. <laughs> he, he probably does, mate. He probably does. His, <laughs> his bat has got better over time. He averages 33.95. Oh over mm. the course of the last few years, which is above Ascending. league average. For him to be a top six batsman, what I would like to see is some more centuries. I've got yeah, him as seven percent worse than a top six batter in county championship cricket over the last six years. And that is purely because his hundred ratio is very, very poor. He's only scored two hundred during that yeah. time. So three percent of his outs equate to scoring a hundred. Scores twelve percent of his team's runs. And yes, he was in an unfashionable county. That rates mm. him quite high in this list of players. His mm. bowling isn't going to be a frontline spinner, but if you're ever in a position where you need a little bit of extra batting and mm. you need someone that can bowl a bit of spin because you've got Root, you've probably got a Leach or a Parkinson or someone like mm. that, then I can see a world where Critchley comes in. 
And I don't know whether it's to do with the county he was playing at, but is one, his bowling strike rate is above the team's bowling strike rate in those games he played in. He's got a strike rate of 62, team had 66. Two fifers in the mix over the last three and a half years. But his, his economy rate with the ball is 3.61. And that's where I go, is that part and parcel of playing in a poor team that's not being successful and you become a little bit more hittable and batsmen are a little bit more aggressive. So I don't see him as a top six batsman for England. I don't see him as a frontline spinner. Could he be a number seven? You know, this was the hill that you were willing to die on, Rich. You've got a big game of football at three o'clock with Forrest in mm. the playoffs for the first time in 20 odd years. Is it number eight? <laughs> Yeah, but I think he's fairly at number eight. I think you're being unfair with him. I really do. Because we are, we're not asking him to bat in six and we're not asking no, we're him not. to be the frontline spinner. And this is the whole conversation. If if I try and get Critchley in the conversation of spinners, which will be coming up soon, then shout me down on this one because he's, yeah. he's not good enough to be a spinner and there's too many players ahead of him to be a spinner. He got 1,000 runs last year. How many yeah, English players good. got 1,000 runs last year? Tom Haynes, Critchley... Anyone else? English players? I'm sure there's one or two others. There was about six players that got 1,000 runs last year. I think Rob Yates got very close. He probably you can add on into 1,000 if you class the Bob Willis Trophy final. So not yep. many players got 1,000 runs. So he's an ascending cricketer. It's one of those, isn't it? Young leg spinners don't get early opportunity a lot of the time to bowl. So you know, And it's one of those things where you're developing your craft as a leg spinner. Not every young bowler is going to be perfect. So if you kind of take it isolation, you know, last year and as we go forward I think his stats are going to be improving I think he's going to be somebody that can be a player for England in some formats I mean he's a decent pretty attacking player as well he has played England as he's gone through so I think he's I think he's worthy of inclusion I do like him as a cricketer and yes I, I would I, that was my hill I would die on that hill for the I, I'm having him in the list so any Matt Critchley truthers out there <laughs> solidarity give us the big MC down in the comments below um, moving exactly. on to number seven moving Rich. on County, yeah. A county cricket favourite. County cricket darling. Um, he's 27. He's Ryan Francis Higgins. Um, he's a solid player, isn't he? He really is a solid, solid player. Um, he's got a first-class batting, high score of 199. Come on, what were you doing? Um, an average of 32, 2,500 runs, give or take, 600s, 850s, with the ball, 192 wickets, Rob. 22 average, best match, 1196, best in 7 for 42. Seven five-wicket hauls he has to be on this list. Now, the argument with his, the bowling will be, does he bowl with enough juice? Has he got enough pace behind him? Is he another bowler that's going to be a little bit like a, um, a Tom Haynes or somebody that's bowling low 70s? Is that going to cut it in international level? We don't know. YouTube channels count. Is get the speeds on your feeds. Yeah. Oh, there's a T-shirt. The speeds on the feeds. <laughs> we need to know. Ryan Higgins deserves to know. Um, but he's an exceptional cricketer, exceptional. Gloucestershire folk, um, they love him. We love him. He deserves to be on the list, Rob. Great hair. Talk to me. Talk to me about Ryan Higgins. I've got him ranked as the third best all-rounder in county cricket over the course of the last three and a half years, purely mm. based on performance. He's 14% better than a league average top six batter, and he's 13% better than a uh, mm. bowler in county mm. championship cricket. Average is 38 with the bat during that time. One thing that holds him in good regard is there's five centuries to his name. That's pretty mm. serious business. That's why he's above yeah. match Critchley, because he was able to convert those scores. Five centuries. Critchley was very similar with his batting numbers, <laughs> um, but obviously averaging a little bit less. 132 wickets at an average of 24. He takes 25% of his team wickets, which is only behind one other player on this top 10 mm. list. And he's got a strike rate of 55 which is uh, almost 12 better than what's going around in the teams that he's playing in. And five, five wickets, Halls. For Gloucestershire, he is the big man. Great yeah. hair, scores runs, takes wickets, leads well, uh, looks good in magazines with that, that fez. That would look awesome. But he, he's good at both facets. And you're right. Is his bowling good enough to play test match mm. cricket? You can probably make a call just from the eye test and probably say probably not mm. as a frontline bowler because no. you can't see the speeds. If he's bowling 80, 82 mile an hour, it's a, I feel it's a different conversation. But if it's someone bowling 75 mile an hour, he could play test match cricket if his bat's good enough to go with it and the bowlers in yeah. the team are good enough. If you're bowling attacks rubbish, you really need something probably better or quicker from, from the team trying to get that balance. But England generally have a pretty good bowling attack and we're just looking yeah. for a fill-in who can get through maybe seven, 10 overs per 80 overs that's bowled. 
Yeah, you need the balance, basically. That's what we're saying, isn't it? You're going to have your four bowlers. You've got your six batters, including wicketkeeper, because England are blessed in this country with just about every wicketkeeper can bat in that top six. They certainly do for counties. So it is just finding that fill-in, isn't it? And and the next one, Ryan Higgins, absolutely 100%. And I would love to see him get the opportunity to see what he could do against international opposition. But we shall see if that ever happens. The next one is somebody that already has proven he can perform at international level, but not with the Red Bull rock. Liam Livingston. Now. This is a name that gets, gets comes back. This is almost James Vince territory with a name that comes back around and around every time there's an England selection or an England squad. Somebody wants Liam Livingston in the test squad. And I understand why people shout for him. Really talented cricketer. He's 28 now. Uh, he's obviously, a white, as we see him as a white ball specialist, but first-class cricket, he's got an average of 38, 3,000 runs, uh, 700s. He can bat. He's a good enough bat to arguably bat him at five or six. For England. I think there's no doubt in that one. I don't think I'd want him any higher, but five or six, certainly seven, he's good enough. With the ball though, Rob, a little bit of a Critchley conversation here. He's only got 43 wickets at an average of 36. One five wicket haul. Granted, he's a fill-in, isn't he? Um, bowler, or he has been in first-class cricket. This would be the same scenario, wouldn't it? That we've got the bowling attack, we've got a spinner in the team. We see Livingston coming in in this role He's the second spinner, arguably a third spinner with Joe Root in there as well. So mm. I think there's a case to be made, certainly, that he could come in. But I think there's probably a stronger case for him to come in as a batsman at five or six who, and with somebody that can offer you a few overs in a pinch. Yeah, yeah, you're right. He, he's talented enough to bat in the top five or six. KP made a call for him the other day on Twitter, which is uh, where the name come from. There's the KP drop for the podcast. <laughs> Rich is off. Um, <laughs> Bloody KP. I, I, How did you get KP on all rounders? KP tweeted about him. He, he was like, hey, Liam Livingston said, should be playing Test cricket for England. And I went, yeah, he probably should. But let's not look at it in isolation of going, someone can hit a white ball 170 <laughs> metres. Let's see what they've got. Liam Livingston was part of the England team that came to New Zealand in 2018. And I, I spoke about this on a previous pod the other day. He averaged 45 50 for 2016, 2017. Then his red ball game kind of went downhill just a little bit. Over the course of the last three and a half years, he's averaged 32, uh, not great, one century to his name, and he's averaged 31 with the ball. They're just very average numbers, but he's not an average cricketer, he's not an average person, and he's not an average player on a cricket field, mm -hmm. I think, no. given any format that he's going to be involved in. If you want an easy way, you know, Stokes goes down and you need to bring someone in, I think Livingston's going to give you a little bit more balance um, in your team. He's not going to be a frontline yeah. spinner. I I don't really believe he's a frontline spinner in T20 cricket either. I think he's a Glenn Maxwell, fill you in for maybe one or two overs, trying to eat up that fifth bowler sort of role. But getting him into the England team, this may be a way that it ends up happening, where he ends up batting at yeah. seven. The pressure's com completely gone. Or yeah. do England look at him as a five? Either way... Is going to give you an all-rounder sort of capability. And again, we're not looking for the next Ben Stokes, both and Flintoff. These guys mm -hmm. that are world-class at two things that they do, they don't really exist very often in Test Match cricket. No, absolutely not. So it'd be an exciting selection. I think a lot of people would really look forward to watching him play for England in a Test Match. And we will see what this new positive um, culture and intent is going to be under McCullum and Stokes with Rob Key, obviously driving that culture as well. Really interested to see it. As we spoke about on the last pod, when we spoke about Brendan McCullum, go and have a look for that one if you can. But we um, positive isn't just about smacking the ball all over the place. It's about being positive in everything you do, isn't it? It's about being a positive blocker, um, yeah. a positive fielder, positive uh, <laughs> anything you do. Um, so Livingston coming in the team, it's not that that's it, that's it. We're going to start shouting charge as we run down the track trying to smack the spinner back over his head. It just means he could fit the, um, the the ethos maybe of what they're trying to build because he, he is that type of cricketer, isn't he? So yeah. I think deserving on the list, but I think it's um, all-rounder is a stretch, um, certainly in the test side, I think, but he certainly deserves to be on here. Next man up, we're staying spin, Rob. Don Bess. England have loved him for a long time as almost like an all-rounder. He has batted yeah. at seven, I'm pretty sure. Please tell me if I'm wrong. I feel like he has batted at seven for England. Please tell me, Rob. Quickly check your stats. You keep Come talking. on, stats, man. Check. You keep talking, Don, I'll tell you. Don Bess, Don Bess is he's, he's just about to turn 25. So he's, he's about where I think he was age-wise. I was going to call him sneaky old, but he's not. 14 test matches, 36 wickets, an average of 34. It's not bad. Two five wickets. In first-class cricket, he's got 189 wickets in 70 appearances. That is good. 31.26. Batting-wise, test matches, 
he's averaging 22.78, 150. First class, he's averaging 23.31, almost the same, 2,000 runs uh, with one century and nine fifties. If we could get him to swap in the next few years his first class bowling average with his first class batting average <laughs> and average about 30 with a bat and about 23, 25 with a ball, then I will have a conversation to say Don Best is a genuine conversation piece for an all-rounder. At the moment, I don't think he is. And I, don't, I think for England, he's been crowbarred into the team too much because there is a perception that he can bat. Yeah, And I don't think he deserves to be in the team necessarily on his spin bowling. However, I think he did quite well and I do like him as a cricketer. But I just want to see him hone his craft a little bit more in county cricket. He's under the eyes of Root and others. Take more wickets, be a little bit more consistent with the bat. And I think he's an England player of the future. I think he's been given a lot of opportunity early where maybe it wasn't quite right. But uh, but you yeah. tell me, Rob, did he bat at seven? Uh, no, actually. He's no. batted at four, five, eight, nine and ten. Four and five? Night Watchman? Uh, yeah, yeah, must have been. Night Watchman at four and five. But genuinely, he's, he's batted wow. at number eight, yeah. where he actually okay, averages better. 29 in test match cricket. So yeah. I think that's where this comes from, this selection. We know that England like him. We know England like they feel they get a lot of balance from him. Mm. But what I'm looking when I look at that is he's batted most of the time at eight and the second most of the time at nine. So maybe yeah. England don't see him at a seven. But he's probably mm. got potential. I actually look at him and think you're probably going to be, end up being a better bat than you are a bowl, to be honest. His bowling oh, yeah. hasn't been great. It's a less than league average bowler for the last three and a half years for Yorkshire. Mm. Takes 16% of the wickets, 63 wickets, an average of 31. His strike mm. rate is 82 in county cricket. Mm. That's only comparing it to uh, Yorkshire. It's not comparing it to what spin bowlers take wickets at mm. or where spin bowlers take their wickets. I need to go yeah. down into that analysis. 2.32 um, mm. economy rate, which is pretty good, gives you decent control, which is quite mm. interesting because when we watched him bowl for England, quite often we thought mm. there wasn't a lot of control going on and we saw a lot of full tosses. Yeah. Three, five wicket hauls. Um, I think five's absolutely fine for him on I this do. list. Yeah. We know England like him. England will yeah. come back to him. They like his bat. They like his ability to give them something mm. with the ball. I feel in the McCullum era, uh, he is probably at five and there's a long way to go before he gets a reselection. So I think McCullum won- is all about winning games of cricket. Uh, McCullum was very lucky to have the likes of Vittori as his spinner and then Mitch Santner. So I, I think you're going to see the best spinner playing for England and it's not going to be Don Best for a while. No, I think you're right. I like, and like we said, let's be clear, we like him as a cricketer. He's a gritty cricketer. He's, he, I like to see cricketers that uh, don't have clean whites. Yeah. He's one of those blokes. He always looks like he's sliding around. He looks like a club cricketer at the end of the day, doesn't he? And I like that. I've got a lot of respect for that. But he is a good player. and I would like to see him progress. And there's somebody else in this list we're going to get to shortly who is the same. We think that he'd probably become a better batsman than mm. a bowler. No guesses uh, who that one's going to be. But before we get to him, Rob, we've got one more. Lewis Gregory. He has played for England. The Somerset all-rounder. We're going to call him an yeah. all-rounder. He's, he's touching 30. Plymouth born. Good man. Nice part of the world. Um, a decent first-class average batting, nearly 3,000 runs. He's closing in on that, a 22-8-7. So a good first-class career rather rather than average, let's say. 300s, 11-50s. He could do a job at seven. Um, 307 wickets, an average of 25, 10 four-wicket holes, 15 five-wicket holes. Um, he's more of somebody that could come in and uh, and do a job with the ball, isn't it? And, and just about length, he'll length for the tail a bit if he's batting at seven, but he could probably just about solidify it. It depends who he's coming in the team with. He has also played three ODIs. He's played nine T20s for England. So again, he's a player that England do like. He's on the radar. Whether he still is, is a different different question. But this is the problem. When we're looking at all-rounders, who who is there? And I think Lewis Gregory has to be in this category. Yeah, I do. He's he's a genuine all-rounder. Out of players Mm. that scored 500 runs and taken 25 wickets in the last three and a half years, I rank him at number five in the all-rounder stakes in county cricket. He scored a 77 when he was playing one-day international cricket for England. Yeah. In my eyes, never going to be a top six batsman. That's not why he's on this list. I see him as a probably, you know, in an ideal world, he'll be a great number eight. He'll be a great number eight for a test match team could yeah. be a number seven. He averages 29 with the bat in the last three and a half years in county mm. championship cricket. And is that great. is very, very reasonable. His average is good. His balls per mm. dismissal is slightly low, but he scores hundreds in the same time. He's got 200 yeah. in the 36 innings that he's played. And that's something you really want to see. 200, yeah. six fifers, going at less than three and over, 94 wickets at an average of 20. Mm. He's just genuine all-round quality in county cricket. 
He's played international cricket, T20 mm. cricket, one day international cricket. He's played Big Bash. He's played PSL. Uh, he's played 100. He's, it's, I like him. I really like yeah. him. And that's why we put I him did. so high. It's why we put him above Bess, above Livingston and these guys. Because yeah. I feel he would be, it's not a light for light replacement, but you're getting yeah. something that's pretty damn good and is quite exciting. Yeah, he could do a job, couldn't he? And this is why it's so important, just to stress as well, Rob, that, that three-year rolling stats that you do. Lewis Gregory, just go back to it. His batting average a career in 100 appearances is 22.87. Three Last three years, you're saying it's nearly 30. 36. Oh, sorry. Batting average, uh, just 29, over 30. 29 with yes, that. Sorry, so about 30. So we're talking 23 to 30. That makes a difference. When you're qualifying a batsman, when you're looking at a batsman's stats and you see he's averaging 23, you're like, eh, he's not really much of a bat, is he? But yeah. then you say he's averaging 30 when you're talking about the, the average for batters in county cricket over the last three years is about 32, 33. Yeah, so saying, over this period of time, a top six batsman average is 32.23. So he's so not that tells far me off. He, He's about a seven. <laughs> so yeah. He's exactly where we'd want him to be, wouldn't he? And I think he would certainly do a good job. He wouldn't let anyone down. Yeah, right, let's yeah, get into right. it. Top three. We know Ben Stokes is number one, obviously. Who's number three? This is a bit of a toss of a coin. Somebody might have him at this man at two. Others will have him at three. But it's Sam Curran, 23. He's nearly 24 years old. He's been exceptional with a bat this year so far uh, in county cricket since he's come back from the IPL. Just quickly, 80, 33, 64, 73. Superb, consistent, really, really consistent. 3,000 runs in first-class cricket. 21 half centuries, Rob. He's also got himself, you know, in combined with that, 8 and 15 runs and average of 25 with a bat. Three half centuries for England. So just on the batting side first, he doesn't have 100. Nowhere does he have 100. Don't know about second 11. I'm sure he has one at club cricket or something, but he Back does not have 100. Brother. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> Bowling-wise, um, test cricket, 47 wickets, an average of 35. First class overall, 200 wickets dead at 30. Uh, best of 10 for 101 in the game, 7-5 seven, seven, wicket hauled. This is a guy that a number of times people have speak about him, a number of times we've spoken about him. We believe he will become a better batsman as his yeah. career develops. I would like to see him become the batsman. If he can get that first 100, it wouldn't surprise me if the floodgates open and he gets more and more. He gets opportunity. He bats at a decent number for Surrey. I think I'm right in saying he's bats at about yeah, he's six, isn't six he? now. Yeah, which is great, which is, I think, where he could end up for England. Um, so really, really talented cricketer. Bowling-wise, I don't think he should be part of a four-man attack, personally, but he would be a good fifth bowler. Yeah, That's how I see him going forward. A really good fifth bowler and somebody that could really offer something with the bat. With the bat. Yeah, and, it, you know, he's probably his best I saw in bowl was maybe against India last year. He had a moment where he got two or three wickets. It might have been in a spell. It might have been in the day mm. where he really started to get some late swing and start to challenge the pads. And I'm like, that's mm. that's the left armour that we want to see. Mm. But I yeah. don't think he's quite that. But what we did see last year was him score 95 in a one-day international. I think that was away against India. Um, he scored 350s in test cricket already. So England like what he can do down the order. I ranked him, and coming back to that 500 runs, 25 wickets over the last three and a half years, I ranked him as the fourth best all-rounder in the country. Mm. Um, incredible record, actually. 550 runs. It's not the most runs, but he's only had 15 innings. An average of 36. The only thing missing from that to make it a really quality and put him into the top like one or two is there's no hundreds thrown into that. But with the ball, yeah. it's not bad. It's 3.18 economy rate. It's slightly high. His bowling mm. strike rate is 47, which I actually think is exceptional given he's probably played half mm. his games at the Oval and 26 yeah. wickets at 25. I think you're right. When you look at him, I see a young, talented player that's stronger, mm. definitely stronger given the pace that he bowls at with the bat. If he can mm. become a top six bat, which he's more than capable of doing, because he's yeah. already, you don't score 95 in a one day international in India against a team that's absolutely butchered you in the series. Yeah. If you're not pretty damn good with the bat, he is pretty damn good with the bat. And I'd love to see him just bowl in a lesser part role in this England team. And particularly, you know, we've seen games mm. where he's opened the ball and he's not, he's, he's, that speed just isn't quite going to work at test cricket. His control's not quite rare yeah. there and he doesn't do enough with it. So mm. I, I think three on this list is great. You could make a call that actually he probably could be above uh, number two on this list if you want someone that's probably going to be a better bat. I agree. I agree. I think let's qualify this a little bit. The way I would see this is Sam Curran, he's only 23, 24. 
he's somebody that could potentially go on to replace Ben Stokes as the all rounder. Yeah. I think he's the Big. yeah the next one that along if Ben Stokes you know Ben Stokes when we get to him you know it, we're not looking at the end of Ben Stokes now but he is nearly thirty one years old so we just need to be mindful of that. He's seven years younger um, Sam Curran isn't it? So that's the option. But if we needed to balance the team tomorrow, Rob. Would you go current or would you go this man, Chris Wokes? I mean, I don't know why he wasn't in the conversation for England's number three, in all honesty. This man is one of the most technically correct batsmen that England yeah. have. He looks beautiful with that grey nickels coming down. This man looks like a proper batsman, Chris Wokes. So batting career first, OK. He's got 1,675 runs for England, an average of 27.91. That's better than some of our top fives that we've tried over the last few years. A high, he's got 100, 137 not out, 650s. First class career, 161 appearances, 6,302 runs, 10 hundreds, 25 half centuries. And with the ball, first class, 544 wickets, an average of 25. That's exceptional. Test wickets, 130 at 30, as I say, 45 test matches. Obviously, he plays white ball. In this scenario, we're asking Chris Wokes to replace Ben Stokes at home. <laughs> Let's put it that way. Obviously. <laughs> <laughs> because... I hate being making fun of Chris Wokes. I hate criticizing Chris Wokes. But overseas, he's just showing that he's just not a bowler. But maybe mm. he's a fifth bowler. Maybe he's a fifth bowler who could give you, who could, who could balance your team at seven uh, and provide a little bit more with the bat and give him that extra responsibility with the bat. Why not? <laughs> Why not? I mean, mm. you. You, you're not asking him, we'll keep coming back to it, but you're not asking him to be Ben Stokes. You're asking him to be Chris Wokes and just bat slightly up the order and have less mm. responsibility with the ball, which I actually think is really good for him. For England, he has batted at seven before. And uh, yeah, he went and scored 137 not out and averages 70 there. Averages 22 yeah. batting at eight and 30 at nine. He's a, he's a genuine test cricketer. You've, you've got to yes. see it like that. As a batsman uh, specifically, He's good enough, averaging almost 28. Yeah. If our number seven was averaging 28, I think we'd probably be okay with that. If you were asking him to yeah. concentrate on his batting a bit more and be less of a bowler, I think you'll probably get a little bit more out of the wood yes. than, than what you do get. Um, yeah. You can't really look at this county championship number because there's only been three innings that he's batted in in the last three and a half years, yes. which is absolutely <laughs> yeah. fine. This happens with England players. They don't come yeah. all come back and play county championship cricket, particularly the ones like Chris Wokes. And Ben Stokes that go on and play uh, IPL cricket and things like that at the start of the season where people really try and cash in and get plenty of first-class cricket thrown in. Do mm. I think he can bat at seven? Yes, I do. Do I think he should be part of this England bowling attack, uh, batting at eight and being like first change? I'm undecided still. Mm. I'm still undecided on horses for courses, play him at home. The things that I like about Wokes is, is control, which was lacking in the West Indies, actually. Mm. But two, there's a consistency of speed. And I was looking at a graph from a Wisden article. Um, Crick Ollie posted it on Twitter to me, which was very mm. kind of him. But it showed the speed of England's bowlers and the movement over the period of how many spells they bowl. And Chris Wokes had pretty much was mm. on trend with bowling, 82, 83 mile an hour. Throughout the day, throughout the spell, six, mm. seven, eight spells in an innings, he was all good. And I really liked that about him. Um Mm. I do worry a little bit that we've seen his bowling really been exposed quite badly. Mm. He wasn't great in Australia, potentially a little bit unlucky in Australia, but you know, yeah. not quite working out. West Indies, he was very, very poor with Overton, who's obviously not on this list. W would I take him at seven? Yeah, I would. I would take him at seven mm. as a lesser bowler role because it puts less pressure on him. Yes. But I do think he's a better bowler than his away record gives, even though it's a really yeah. big body of work and there was the best comment the other day saying every time Bobby says body of work you've got to take a shot because it comes out about 10 times an episode <laughs> that sounds fair and KP as well yeah. you have to shoot yourself <laughs> every time he says KP um, joke right okay so I think Chris Wokes is exceptional we've already said that it, it, I, I, if we could just keep Chris Wokes and keep him safe and keep him happy in England and then tell him to go on holiday with his family over the winter I think I would be happy with that. I mean, and that's no, I'm not trying to take the mick again out of him. Honestly, he's an exceptional cricketer in English conditions. I love the guy for England. He's such a good player. But for whatever reason, it's not quite clicking overseas, is it? Maybe he's the player you don't take forward overseas and you keep Anderson and Broad going for as absolutely as long as you possibly can. 
Wokes is maybe the man that gives opportunity to others, isn't it? But you, just a quick point as well, when you're talking about his consistency in speed, maybe we need Chris Wokes to sit down next to Ollie Robinson a bit more and just, just tell him everything he knows. How does he achieve that? What does he have yeah. to do to make sure he can do that? This is what you need to do if you want to do it for international. Not trying to be hard on Ollie Robinson, but clearly he needs a bit of a nudge uh, in the right direction with one or two things, doesn't he? And someone like Chris Wokes, I wouldn't mind learning a few things off him yeah. as well. Um, I just want to quantify, just for people that don't know it, yeah. I think it's something that goes around all the time, but Wokes is average. 94 wickets, an average of 22 in England with the ball from 25 yeah. tests. 20 tests away, 36 wickets, an average of 51.88, an economy rate over three, and a strike rate over 100. Yes. For whatever reason, it's not clicking. And, you know, the balls, the conditions, whatever it might be, but it just doesn't work, does it? So... <clears throat> Excuse me. But yeah, Chris Wokes, top, top player. I think he deserves to be here now, but I think Sam Curran will be number two very shortly. Right, let's get on to the big, the big dog, the main man, Ben Stokes, New England captain, 30-year-old, turn, about to turn 31. Um, so he is in that sneaky old category that we like to uh, to reference, Rob. Um, it's just exceptional, his record. He's 79 test appearances so far. I'm looking forward to celebrating his 100th test match appearance as captain winning a series I don't know when that will line up but it's going to be great yeah. um, over 5,000 runs a high score of 258 an average of nearly 36 1100s 26 50s um, just brilliant 9,000 runs in first class cricket 20 centuries 45 um, half centuries I'll come on to what he's been doing recently in a moment with the ball as well 174 wickets an average of 32 five, uh, four or five wicket hauls and overall in first class cricket 349 wickets at an average of 30 if you're concerned in any way that Ben Stokes isn't in form, since his return to Durham after his injury, in his first knock, he got 161 off 88 deliveries. I haven't read that wrong. It was 161 off 88 deliveries. 17 sixes, 182 strike rate. And then in this last game, he's followed it up. He's got 82 off 110, eight fours, two sixes. Bowling-wise, I think he's still getting, getting going again. But bring on the first test. Ben Stokes is captain. He is in the form, I'm not going to say form of his life, but I feel like we're going to see another level of Ben Stokes now he's got this captaincy. I just feel like he's going to be able to perform a little bit freer, whatever it might be, but I just think we've got another level to hit with Ben Stokes and I cannot wait. A bit like Joe Root's done in the last calendar year. He hit another level, didn't he? Where did yeah. that come from? I think we're going to have a great summer in Ben Stokes. Or a great yeah. year of Ben Stokes. He's been good since... Since he had all those issues with Hales on a night out and got a bit punchy after a few beers, yeah, he's actually Hales been exceptional. When they toured here, I think it was 2018, England got rolled at Eden Park for 50-odd. Trent Bolt went through them. Mm. But I remember watching Ben Stokes, and Ben Stokes got caught at cover playing some silly shot off the back foot. Mm. But I was watching him, and I was watching the time that he had compared to anyone else on that field. And I was just like, wow, his batting mm. is looking yeah. like it could just go off. And it did. It did go off. He averaged 45 in 2019. He averaged mm. 58 in 2020. Most runs in the calendar year for that for anyone that year. Poor year last year. Um, blighted by injuries with his finger going on average 21, but averaging 32 this year already. Already got a century to his name. I feel exactly the same as you. I just feel this is going to bring the best out of Ben Stokes. Dropping mm. down a position is going to bring the best out of Ben Stokes. A little bit more freedom mm. about how he's going to play the game. Hopefully... Yeah some more support from the top order. Guys like Stokes, one, he steps up when the team really needs it. But mm. if the top order performs well, it allows people of his his ability and how he plays, his stroke-making ability all around the wicket, going at a decent rate, to go and execute those things with less pressure on the line mm. and have more margin and room for error. And I, I, I'm, I'm excited. And mm. you know what? If he moves down to six... I just feel we get enough bowling support, bringing Jimmy and, yeah. and Brody and people like that back into the team, take the pressure off his bowling. Doesn't mm -hmm. have to bowl that many overs. Just got to <laughs> fill in maybe five to eight to 10 at a push in that 80 over yeah. period. Yeah, absolutely. And that's it. And, I, and like we've joked about before, there is no way in the world Ben Stokes can over bowl Ben Stokes as much as Joe Root over bowled yeah. Ben Stokes. 100%. Yeah. It, honestly, they, those guys are friends. I would hate to see a captain that disliked me if I was Ben Stokes. So he, he'd be ruined. Um, I wonder if we've got a future where Ben Stokes could potentially bat higher, five, maybe even four, if Root ever was to go three, the yo-yo Root three, four. Um, who knows? But I wonder if, if he starts parking his bowling a little bit. 
he could end up his career when he's 33, 34, 35 being a batsman, maybe even a top four batsman. I'm not saying he will. Maybe his five is suited to his game more. But I think he's going to have a bit of a year like Joe Root had with the bat. I think he's going to go absolutely massive with the bat. He, he just seems in great nick. He seems in a great place. And I think he's just going to be absolutely just energised by getting his captaincy. And not just the captaincy, but seeing the future with what Key is talking about, what McCullum will be talking about. And Stokes is completely aligned with that, it seems. Yeah. I just think that this is going to go great. And he's by far the number one all-rounder in this country. And he has been for a number of years. Who is coming up next, Rob? That's what we need to know. Sam Curran is the only real option I think we have at the moment going forward. I'd love to know if there's any other younger players. And I think before we're out on this conversation, we just have to quickly mention one person, Moen Ali. He doesn't, he's retired from Test cricket. If he was still available for Test cricket, I'm sure he would be in this top four or five, wouldn't he? Yeah, he would. 100%. Of players easily. Um, and I just want to land on one last name. I'm just genuinely good. When we're talking about all-rounders, one of the players that I wish we'd seen more for England over the years is old Samit Patel, primetime Patel. He's a top four, five, six batsman for not. Scored Lord knows how many thousands of runs. And he's an exceptional bowler. He, he basically was the number one bowler for knots for so many years. As a knots fan, I just still think it's an absolute travesty that we didn't get to see more of Sammy Patel. The guy played until he's nearly 40. He's not fit enough. He never got injured, never missed a game. He's not fit enough. Give me a break. That was the biggest nonsense ever. It was a bit of a con, wasn't it? I don't know what the reason was, but I just think it, what, a, what an all-rounder he was. And I just, I just want to name check him really because he was such a good player and he never really got that opportunity. He was. He was. Class player, mate. Mm. Like I've said before on the podcast, once cleaned up by me. That is <laughs> set you up. Set you up. That's it. No, thanks. I high five that. I'll let you have Critchley take. We're on good terms. <laughs> Critchley take. That's absolutely fine. Um, Don't yeah, you dare so have the I final word on Critchley. You know, Critchley deserves to be eight. <laughs> yeah, we, we said it in the previous podcast with. Uh, McCullum coming in. The future's exciting for English cricket. The team's going to get announced in the next week, maybe even before this video drops. This will be out on Tuesday or Wednesday. Mm. Any changes to it, let us know in the comments below. Next yes, time around, please. we're either going to be doing the spin bowlers or we're going to split the pace bowlers out into genuine pace and pace bowlers. Mm. Try and work it out like that. Um, but yeah, thank you so much for watching, everyone. I hope you've enjoyed it. This has been the Leading Edge Cricket Podcast. You've been legends. Until next time. 